Hello my soccer universe, let's put a cap on the English club season. It's actually the first country where I can make this video because in other countries there's either still a round to be played or there's some playoffs that drag out the season, which for once this is not happening in England. While the scheduling over the entire season with, you know, Queen's funerals and all that kind of, kind of stuff was thrown into a major mess, they managed to finish on time. And that is actually for a change refreshing to see. Uh, of course Manchester City dominates uh, again the headlines be being one step closer to travel after beating United in the FA Cup final. Overall convincingly so, although at the end it was a little bit shaky as well, but I gotta say anything but Manchester City winning uh, that one would have felt not quite fair to be honest. Uh, and so they are still on route for a uh, treble. I'm wearing Villa who are back in Europe. I think that's a major development and I think they have the right coach to actually do some damage there. Yes, it's only the Conference League, but since it's the Conference League uh, and you're a Premier League team, if you take that seriously, especially in the latter stages, you know that you have a chance. And if you have a coach that has is known, has a good record in European competitions, pull it down, Villa win the Conference League next year. Just saying. Uh, and then we had also the last the relegation decided where Everton do survive on the last match day and... Leicester and Leeds go down and while Leeds we saw that one coming in a way I still get two jerseys from them uh, Leicester was they, well, they, they were in danger early in the season then they, you thought they had made the turn around and then the season ended in tragedy and so I think it was overall uh, almost 10 seasons or 9 seasons now in the Premier League for Leicester and what a ride that was. This was easily the most successful time and I think this is something we gotta remember uh, now and I honestly think that Leicester have a way to, yes they will lose some players but I think that that's a team that I would expect to come up uh, relatively quickly again. Uh, but just after being promoted barely surviving uh, in the Premier League and then the season after they win the championship then you know kind of finishing mid-table and then getting another go under uh, especially once Brandon Rogers came in uh, twice missing out on the Champions League just by a hair uh, having a deep run in the Conference League last le 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 season Leicester seemed to be like um, the seventh best team in England and then this downfall is probably a little bit down to reacting too late or making the wrong, uh, you know, not having good squad politics and so on, uh, not updating enough, being also in financial trouble, you know, you lost Kaspar Schmeichel uh, and other big players and maybe that was a little bit too big of a toll, but as Gary Lineker, who is of course uh, Leicester's premier fan in, in, in a way said, you know, I'm sad, sad about that, but what a ride it has been. And I think any fan of any team, if you get relegated after such a nine-year spell, after hey, you've been nothing special over your entire history, I think everyone will take that one. And as I said, I actually think of the relegated teams, I have the feeling that Leicester is the one that will come back up the fastest again because it's just meanwhile a uh, too well established club and I think they will get into the championship. Speaking of the championship we also have the playoffs and maybe I'll start I'll start there uh, where we had already Burnley being up we had already uh, Sheffield um, United coming up uh, into the Premier League in the playoff uh, everyone was kind of uh, salivating to potentially have a Sunderland as Middlesbrough final and one of those big hitters is gonna make it back into the Premier League after uh, rough times and then it's Coventry against Luton who play in that final uh, two smaller teams um, which is charming I wouldn't say that both of these are necessarily Premier League caliber but it's charming to see such uh, small teams also make, making around in the end. It's Luton uh, who make it back into the Premier League, winning in, at the playoff final at Wembley on penalties. 
Uh, in you know those were rather good penalties. Uh, both teams had their spells in there. It was a rather even final. But Luton actually finished the season in third place. So I think overall this was also uh, kind of deserved. It also is a little bit of an indication because Luton was one of the founding clubs of the pre Premier League, only to get relegated before the Premier League ever started. So finally they get their first Premier League season. I think that's also good to see. Okay, let's uh, go into the games, the last uh, two uh, match days of the Premier League season. Uh, we had two midweek makeup games, the last ones of the season. Brighton and City play out probably one of the most entertaining, uh, however, slightly pointless games. Although Brighton, I think, were they already qualified that very well. But you know, whatever, it was entertaining, it was fun. It ends 1 1, and then Manchester, Manchester United seal the Champions League. Um, place with a resounding 4-1 uh, destruction of Chelsea where Joao Felix only very late on gets the um, make a, the consolation goal. Casemiro early on and Martial just before the half already says it in a way and then Bruno uh, Fernandes and Rashford make it actually rather safe for them and so Liverpool did not qualify for the Champions League which was a major major disappointment. Uh, the last match they actually was all about um, who will make it f into the Conference League and most importantly who will get relegated. So I'm focusing on that one. Aston Villa get the win over Brighton uh, and actually overall quite deserved one as well. Douglas Lewis and Oli Watkins scoring the two, two goals. And again, this was a Villa side that uh, looked like they might get in danger of being relegated. And you know, Emery takes over and puts, gets them into Europe. Great job. Uh, if you have a capable man, ma manager, you can do amazing things without spending yourself crazy, without spending cray crazy. And this is something that all he has has a little bit lost, but I, I would like to have managed a uh, man managed here. Uh, Undorf actually scored two goals for Brighton, but only one, can't count the other one, was an offside. But I think Aston Villa really, really deserved that one. And so uh, Spurs who were already on the outside lo looking in, uh, it didn't really matter for them anymore. However, I mean, they knew they, they, knew they had to get it. I mean, Harry Kane star, uh, scores after four, uh, two minutes, getting, I think, again, uh, over 20 goals in the process in a really, really rotten Spurs team. Of course, their opponents, Leeds, were fighting for survival and that put a big damper onto that very, 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 very quickly on and Spurs were just better. I mean, Pedro Porro makes it after they have 2-2-0 two, two and it was resounding at that, that point. When Jay Harrison pulls one back for, for Leeds, there was maybe a slight glimmer of hope, uh, unfortunately. Uh, was wasn't meant, meant meant to be in Harry Kane uh, get 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 some, but Lucas Moura sets it off. So Leeds are relegated. Um, it's also a team where I look at it. This doesn't look like a championship side, uh, but a very very badly managed team. They still have the kind of the post Bielsa hangover and never really got it right. And I worry a little bit about Leeds to be honest, where uh, this journey continues. Leicester, however, gave themselves a good shot, but it's uh, a little too late, too little too late in, in, in a way. Harvey Barnes and uh, Wout Fasch uh, scoring the two, two goals for now, only get, uh, pull, pull, pulling one back late. Overall, it was a deserved win, however, it did not matter all, all that much because Everton scraped to their big victory over Bournemouth with a brilliant Ducure goal in a very, very nervy match. Uh, Bournemouth were more or less on the beach before, but somehow Everton were just too nervous to get anything going. But that goal seals Everton's survival and yeah, they escape again. But I think big change has to be made big changes have to be made there as well. Lastly, I want to mention the craziest game of that round. It was Southampton against Liverpool. Uh, didn't matter in the end, but it was a 4-4. That's a rare result, but what was even rarer is that Liverpool had a 2-0 lead. Southampton came back to go into 4-2 and then within short uh, moments, Bobby, uh, I think uh, two goals, I think one by Bobby Firmino to make it a 4-4. So crazy, four unanswered in between four goals for Liverpool. So uh, rather impressive result 
overall. Uh, final standings. I mean, we have we already said the, the important things. We have City, Arsenal, United, and Newcastle are in the Champions League. Liverpool, Brighton in the Europa League, and Aston Villa um, uh, in the Conference League. And Leicester, Leeds, and Southampton go down, pretty much causing a loads of carnage into my this season Premier League collection with losing three teams, and none of the teams that are coming up are in my collection. So not good. Not good at all. Let's go FA Cup final. Manchester City um, against Manchester United. A first Manchester final. It was a grand occasion. It was split. But I love when 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 when, when they can do the Wembley is one half in one color, one half in the other color. We already had a playoff five finals. It was here the same way. And after 13 seconds. Ilkay Gundogan already kind of pre-decided that final. Uh, hitting it so... I mean, it was a really odd clearance uh, from front of the game. I mean, Gundogan kicks out the ball, goes long because there's Holland. Uh, it bounces back to him and Gundogan just takes it out, out of there and into the net. And then for 10 minutes, I think there should have been probably a second one after four. Uh, Manchester City completely in control of the game. United, though, could then get a foot into the door and said, okay, we're still here. However, they didn't create all that much. That is until one of those handball calls that I don't get. Uh, I think the ball is um, headed back and hits Grealish, who is jumping on the hand. And if you see in the replay, Grealish has even his eyes closed. How that is a handball, and especially from that close of a distance, is a little bit beyond me. Fortunately, Paul Tierney is a referee that is not very well uh, known for is not very well known for a for, for being a great referee. Actually, I would say the opposite. Still, does not deserve all the crap that he's getting from uh, Jurgen Klopp. But that's another point, and it's a penalty. And I cannot tell you why I was in a way hoping for United to win uh, this title because I don't want to have to see another triple. Although, uh, to be honest, if this City team wins the triple, it's, it's very well deserved. They have head and shoulders above everyone else being the best team in England. And in Europe for that matter. No matter what happens. They just are. So in that, that, that sense, uh, one, I would appreciate that there wasn't all that, uh, you know, the club set up behind it. If this was built uh, without all that money and all that controversy and all the cheating that we still is not resolved, if that would happen, if that would not be there, I think I would be very excited about, about the team. So I'm kind of blasé about it. Bruno Fernandes equalizes, but as, as I said, this penalty call really, really, really annoyed me. Because I felt it was not a fair call. And then on the other side, I think De Bruyne gets put down in the box. And that is not a penalty. And they're not looking at that one. This is one of the CC situations where I really would like to say, okay, let's have a look at this one. Um, I think then even uh, Varane had a chance. But overall, I think uh, United were kind of lucky to be 1-1 one, one into the game. Second half, again, just... Shortly after a uh, kickoff, I mean 66 minutes, um, Gundogan gets a second one, a rather weird shot. I'm not sure if it got deflected, but uh, what was even weirder is that the hair reacted very, very late. But he is the hero, he is the captain armband, and he will probably leave. And uh, let's see where he will go. Um, but at that point, it was 2 1 City, and everything pointed only in one direction. We even thought that Gun Gun would have gotten a third one, but it was then offside. However, um, two changes by then Ten Hag made it actually uh, in in interesting. Again, we bring on Garnacho for Ericsson and Wout Weichos for Sancho, and suddenly it became a little bit tighter than probably most City fans would have liked. Garnacho missing a pretty big chance uh, on one side and then very, very late on Scott McTominay, who also came, came on, had two chances to equalize in one scene in deep in stops of time. I think hitting the crossbar even at one point and head, heading over. Goldmouth scramble. But honestly, this would have been riding the luck a little bit too much. And City deservedly win the first Manchester Derby in an FA Cup final. 
was not a vintage final, but it has the record for fastest goal and I think it has the deserved winner. And so it's two down, one to go for City. And let's see what they will do in the Champions League final where they will be the overwhelming favorites. Now, I want to finish out the video and just having the season summary uh, out, we have Manchester City for now winning the double. Manchester United can console themselves with, by winning the League Cup. So all the titles this season go to Manchester. Uh, we already talked talk about who is going where. We know the three relegated teams and we know that Burnley, Sheffield United and Luton Town are being promoted. But we also see on the right side here, I can um, to kind of judge the seasons a little bit. You see from my model, the points that I expected preseason in the right column and the points that they actually made in the left, left column. You see City just a little bit outperforming themselves. But uh, the big possible surprises are, of course, Arsenal and Newcastle United on top, but also Brentford and Fulham. Uh, as well as Brighton and Villa really um, outperformed their expectations. So those are, of course, the teams that we all lo 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 look at uh, to be the big surprises. With uh, when, when I see Ar Arsenal having about 20 points more than they would have expected, that is definitely the outstanding stat of the season. So in a way, Arsenal are the relative champions. When we go for ne negative, of course, you see the big red bar at Liverpool, but there's a much, much bigger one for Chelsea. Chelsea's season uh, has been a dumpster fire all along, and it's just something to forget. And maybe Pochettino, who is coming in now, can turn, turn, turn around. Um, let's see. They don't have any uh, Champions League, so the load on them will be lighter, but it needs definitely some serious squad management. Another way to judge the season is, is of course, to look at the expected points uh, with the ratings uh, preseason, which we had here, and then take, take the ones that were expected uh, with the ratings now. Where we see that Man Manchester City just more or less stayed the same all year, year, year long, but Liverpool's uh, overall took a hit, as did Spurs and Chelsea. So those are the three that really took major hits. Whereas Newcastle and Brentford were the biggest winners there. You see, our Arsenal's rating overall did not improve all that much, which is a little a little bit surprising. But Newcastle United will be, uh, I think they are here to stay. Because they have uh, also loads of money from loads of, uh, how to say, questionable sources. Let's put, 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 put it this way. And of course, on the bottom, Leicester City is also one of those that have uh, definitely under underperformed. Leeds United, Southampton, surprisingly not so much. And you see Everton just finished where they were supposed to finish, based on their rating. So yeah, that's it for me from the English club season. The new season starts early in August. Let's see what will change, how will be, how there will be many crazy tra transfers and so on. Of course, we could make way too early predictions of who will make it based on uh, my model. We will have, of course, Manchester City, Arsenal, Liverpool and Newcastle United making it into the top four. And we'll see about the rest. And of course, will Chelsea make the big comeback? That's probably one of the big questions there. In any case, please let, let me know what you thought, thought about the season, about the last few games. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel for see more. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.